Hello, in this video we talk about using the delta function for analyzing uh, mixed random variables. In particular, we introduce generalized PDFs. So remember that in the previous video we introduced the delta function. In particular, we looked at this delta alpha of x and then introduced a delta function as the limit as alpha goes to zero delta alpha of x. So uh, here, as we see, 1 over alpha goes to infinity as alpha goes to 0. So the value was infinity at x equals 0, and it was 0 for all other values of x. And we discussed the properties of this uh, delta of x. In, in particular, as I said, delta of x is infinity at 0 and 0 otherwise. So we show it by this kind of uh, notation. So this is 0 delta of x. And then the important issue was that we looked at delta of x as the derivative of the unit step function. Although the unit step function is not uh, continuous and it doesn't have derivative technically, uh, as we said, you know, using this delta function simplifies our analysis. And finally, we discussed uh, the integrals involving the delta function. Uh, if you have any continuous function g of x and you multiply it by a shifted version of a you know delta function this x0 could be any value and integrate uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity we said that the result is g of x0 now in this video we're going to use uh, these properties to introduce uh, pdf or more precisely generalized pdf uh, for mixed and uh, discrete random variables we already know that the pdf for continuous random variables we want to make the concept of the pdf uh, you know, general, so it is applicable to any random variable. So let's start with discrete random variables. Remember, uh, a discrete random variable uh, can have a range uh, R sub x like this, x1, x2, x3. These are the possible values of the random variable. And we saw that uh, the CDF of this random variable has a staircase form. So it's like it goes from you know, 0 at x1 jumps to some value at the, and so on so it looks like this and so on and the values of the jump is the probabilities at uh, that point and we saw that we can write this fx of x the cdf as the sum of px of xk ux minus xk again u is just a unit step function so u of x is this kind of function so now using this new tool, uh, delta function, the delta uh, of x, which is the derivative of the u function, uh, let's see if we can uh, define uh, the PDF for this random variable. So find the PDF for this random variable. So PDF is a derivative of CDF. So it's simply, you know, these are probabilities, so just numbers. So we can write this as px, uh, xk, d, dx, u of x minus xk and as you have seen this derivative is defined as a delta function so uh, this becomes px of xk delta x minus xk so this is what i called uh, the generalized pdf for this random variable uh, for example if i have a bernoulli random variable x is bernoulli with parameter p which means that you know, probability that x is equal to 0 is equal to 1 minus p, probability that x equals 1 is equal to p, then using this thing here, we have the PDF of, uh, or the generalized PDF of this random variable is probability that x is equal to 0 times delta of x minus 0 plus px equals 1 times delta x minus 1, which is basically 1 minus p delta of x plus p delta of x. So, First, let's see if this definition makes sense. So, for example, do we have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, fx of x dx always is it equal to 1? So, let's look, take, look, look at this. So, we have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity sigma px of xk delta x minus xk. And, you know, for simplicity, let's say, you know, x can take only finite many values so let's write this as sum again these are just you know numbers probabilities at each point so I can write this as px of xk integral 
from minus infinity to plus infinity, delta x minus xk dx. And note that the area under the delta function equals to 1. So this becomes simply sigma px of xk. And this is equal to 1. So that makes sense. Let's, uh, for example, check if the formula for the expected value makes sense. So let's, you know, expected value of x is always equal to, uh, you know, integral of x, fx of x, dx, if I have a PDF. So in this case, in this case, I have x, you know, again, I replace PDF with sigma px of xk, delta x minus xk, and dx. And similar to above, if I can write this as sigma px of xk, integral x, delta x minus xk, dx. And here, this is a continuous function, my g of x. I am using this third property of, or fourth property of the uh, delta function. So the an answer is just g, x, g of x0. So basically, I, I can write this as um, xk. So this becomes sigma xk, px of xk. And this is the familiar formula for the expected value of a discrete random variable. So what we have done here, we introduced this delta function. Using that, we have introduced a, a kind of a PDF for discrete random variables. Uh, so from now on, we can use PDF for discrete and continuous random variables. And now we can, uh, because we can use it for discrete and uh, uh, continuous random variables, we can extend it to mixed random variables. So to summarize, for discrete random variables, the PDF looks like this for discrete random variables. And now let's talk about the scenario where we have a mixed random variable and see how we can use the uh, PDF uh, or the generalized PDF. So for mixed random variables, the idea is pretty much the same thing. Uh, basically, uh, you can write your PDF as uh, some of, you know, bunch of uh, terms like this, probability that x equals x k, k delta x minus x k, and then plus a con the, the continuous part of the PDF, plus g of x, where g of x is a continuous function. And then we can use pretty much any formula that we have seen for the PDF, for the PDF uh, to analyze these random variables. For example, if I need to, to find the expected value of the random variable, well, I can write it as x integral x fx of x dx, and you know, I know how to handle the, these integrals for the delta function and a continuous function, so I should be able to do anything I want. So evaluate these integrals. Um, so to summarize, you know, if I have a, a mixed random variable, its PDF or its generalized PDF can be written uh, in this form, uh, where g of x is a continuous random is a continuous function. And this delta of x of my uh, nice xk, um, you know, just bunch of delta functions, and these ak's are probabilities that x equals xk. You know, of course, the function must integrate to one, so integral of uh, minus infinity plus infinity, which in this case becomes sigma ak plus this uh, integral of g of x must be equal to one. So to better understand this, let's look at an example, and we can practice all of that. So here is an example. Let y be a uniform uh, 0, 4 random variable. So basically, this PDF is like this. It goes from 0 to 4, 1 over 4. This is PDF of y. And, you know, if you want, you can look at the CDF as well. CDF goes from 0 to 1. So y, this is the CDF. So I'm going to define the random variable uh, x uh, in, this fan, uh, in this way. So it's equal, if y is larger than or equal to 2, x is just 2. If y is less than 1, x becomes um, uh, 1. And if it's, uh, y is between 1 and 2, x is uh, simply uh, y. And the question is, uh, I want you to find the CDF of x uh, and the PDF of x and find expected value and variance of x using the PDF. So my suggestion is that you solve this problem uh, before watching the rest of the video. Okay, let's look at the solution. So this is, the, you know, basically x is a function of y, and we have seen how to solve these problems. Basically, what we do is, you know, we start with the P CDF, and we're going to say that the CDF of x is 
the probability that x is less than or equal to x and then we just plug in you know whatever function like here is you know x is equal to h of y so we, we write this is the probability that h of y is less than or equal to x and now because you have the, the pdf and cdf of y we should be able to solve this problem so in this case the cdf of y is given here so it's basically it's y over 4 uh, so the cdf of y is y over 4 for values of y between 0 and 4 um, it's 1 for y larger than 4 and 0 else so using that we can find the uh, cdf of x in particular we note that the range of x is from 1 to 2 so x can take values from 1 to 2 so when when we are looking at its cdf for values larger than 2 the cdf of x is 1 for values less than 1 the cdf is 0 now note that uh, in this case if y is larger than 2 right if y is in this region then x becomes uh, uh, 2 so probability that x equals to 2 is the probability of this this region which is 1 half right and similarly if y is less than 1 in this case x becomes 1 so probability that x equals uh, 1 is basically the uh, probability of this region which is 1 over 4 so uh, we will have uh, two jumps in the CDF of x at point equals 2 the, the, the jump the, the value of the jump is one half the probability that x is equal to 2 is one half and there is another jump which is the probability that x is equal to 1 and that the value of that jump is 1 over 4 and then from you know 1 to 2 is basically uh, is a continuous uh, function in particular in this case it becomes you can see that it becomes x over 4 you know, it's simply, you know, because the CD, the CDF of y is equal to y over 4 here, the CDF of x be becomes uh, x over 4. So that's the CDF of x. And now, if we can take its derivative, we can find the PDF of x. So basically, we can write fx of x, which is, the, you know, the derivative of the CDF. Again, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, at least the way I present it, it's not mathematically rigorous, but it's very useful in terms of analysis. So we have 1 over 4, and at, uh, you know, de delta at point 1, so delta of x minus 1, plus another delta at uh, x um, equals 2, so the value is 1 over 2, the probability, delta of x minus 2, plus the derivative of this continuous part, which basically is 1 over 4 from 1 to 2 so that's your uh, PDF so I call this G of X It's a continuous part of my PDF uh, you know G of X is equal to 1 over 4 for values of X between 2 and 1 and 0 otherwise so I have my PDF then I can do whatever I want with it uh, for example I can find the expected value and variance so, for example, let's, let's find the expected value of x is integral f x x dx. So it's integral 1 over 4 delta x minus 1 dx plus 1 over 2 delta x minus 2 dx and plus integral of g of x dx. So it's 1 over 4. Um, sorry, I forgot the f x here and x sorry I forgot the x's so 1 over 4 at x equals 1 so put 1 is 1 over 2 times again x equals to 2 plus you know the integral x times g of x 1 over 4 from 1 to 2 dx so this becomes 1 over 4 plus 1 plus and this integral becomes I believe 1 over 4 times 1 over 2 4 minus 1 3 so 3 over 8 so 1 over 4 plus 1 plus 3 over 8 which is 8 8 plus 3 plus 2 which is 13 over 8 so that's the expected value of x and to find the variance of x you know it's all we need is expected value of x squared again this is integral x squared fx of x dx 
which is uh, integral 1 over 4 x squared delta x minus 1 dx plus 1 over 2 x squared delta x minus 2 dx plus x squared g of x dx and uh, so this becomes again you know x equals 1 so 1 over 4 times 1 squared plus here 1 over 2 2 squared you know why I am using this again fourth property right I am using this thing here I replace this integral by g of, uh, g of x0 so in this case becomes you know 1 over 2 x0 is 2 so 2 squared plus again this is just a regular integral integral from 1 to 2 x squared 1 over 4 dx and and this becomes 1 over 4 plus 2 plus I think um, 7 over 12 yeah and let's see 12 3 plus 24 plus 7 which is 34 over 12. So this is x, e of x squared. So variance of x is simply uh, e of x squared minus e of x squared. So is 34 over 12 minus the expected value, which we found 13 over 8 squared. So that becomes the variance of x. So as I said, we can use this delta function to analyze, uh, you know, random mixed random variables. I should stress again that um, you know it is not necessary to use the delta function. We have seen in the previous videos we can analyze these mixed random variables even without the delta function. But delta function gives us just another way, and sometimes it's just simpler to use the delta function. Okay, thank you.